Hey guys, Steve Blair. Today we got a look at the Shikaku Tier 7 Japanese aircraft carrier. What do we got going on with the Yamaguchi? I got the fish head thing. That's the uh, torpedo speed. And Swirsky inspirations. Ship concealment for Swirsky. Sleeping Giants, the map. Domination mode is the name of the game. Before we get into the match here, I want to talk about the giveaways that are going on. Wargaming gave me a couple ships uh, for the... Uh, two-year anniversary of the game coming out so for channel members there's one giveaway going on and the communities tab uh, channel members are the members of the youtube channel if you'd like to be part of that group you can click the join button or there's a link in the description uh, it's appreciated a uh, great way to support the channel myself or any other youtube channel that you like that's a good way to support them and uh for everyone else that's watching this game uh just go ahead in the comments here Put down your system, PlayStation or Xbox, uh, your gamer tag. You got to spell that accurately uh, for the giveaway to work if you should happen to win. And what tier six premium that's currently available in the store for doubloons. You can that's the universe of possibilities of prizes that you can win. Just go in the game, check out the tier sixes if you can buy it in the store or from the ships tab. Uh, there's a premium ships section there. Uh, if it's available in either of those spots, then you could potentially win it. So go ahead and put your gamer tag system and which tier six currently available premium you would like. And good luck to everyone. And what do we got going on here? Well, we got a destroyer division that we happen to spot. Now we don't actually spot the left hand ship yet, but we can tell with the AA going off. We got two of them over here. And my opening play with the carriers usually going to be trying to find the destroyers and keep them lit for my team. Now, this is a good play if your team shoots the destroyers. In fact, it's a great play, and I think it's the strongest thing that the carriers can do. Keep the destroyers lit. But a lot of the times, like maybe 80% of the time, your team will just flat out refuse. to. <laughs> they'll refuse to shoot the destroyers. Uh, it's not part of their job description according to their philosophy. And they just won't do it. So you need to recognize if your team's not actually utilizing the spotting you're doing, there's no point in just sailing over those uh, destroyers and getting shot down repeatedly. Now, if you can get some damage, and I usually like to use the HE bombers when I'm trying to hit the destroyers. If you can get some damage, you know, that's nice. Get a couple thousand here and there, and that's, you know, that's chunks of the health. If you got 15,000, you know, that's roughly, you know, 7 8% of the ship's health. So... Nice if you can get a little bit of damage there, but you can see that destroyer is taking a lot of damage, and it's because my team's shooting him. And you can see another salvo there, and Cobb is already halfway dead. So I don't think we get him quite yet here, but anytime you can grievously wound a destroyer early on, it kind of limits their playmaking ability. They don't have as much HP. They can't be making certain plays, especially the suicide torp runs that a lot of players like to make. Um, you know, it kind of limits what they can do, so... Good job by the team there. You can see numerous ships shooting at them and whittling them down. So that's a pretty strong play. We actually got them off B. Now I want to go over and scout A. That was that other destroyer. And you can see spotter right there. Ends up being a Shimakaze. Now I think that's that Kaba's division mate. I want to say I have to check at the beginning of the map or the game again. But they kind of split up trying to aggressively take both caps. Shima... Drop some smoke over here. Now we're getting spotted and we're getting shot by the battleship. And as we fly over the smoke, we're going to get the AA from that ship as well. So this is kind of a high risk, low reward type of a play. And, you know, the plane's getting shot down. Not the end of the world. You just have to wait for them to respawn. But I'm just kind of, kind of trying a blind dive there. Now he did pop out once we were in the dive animation. Uh, so we got them spotted there. Our team, once again, do a little bit of shooting into that cloud. Unfortunately, the Megami, I think, is going to be blocked a lot of the time. But we're going to try and spot these destroyers here. He almost got whacked with the Torps. Going to try and drop some bombs there, but we got shot down. Well, we just want to keep him lit. And again, teammates, in general, this game are doing a pretty good job shooting those destroyers. So... If you've got a carrier on your team and he's flying around spotting the destroyers, just shoot the destroyers. It's the strongest play you can make in the game, killing the destroyers. That removes their strong scoring pieces from the enemy team. Your win chances go way up if you're getting those destroyers off. So I like to be flying around here. Uh, you got to be kind of cognizant when you're flying around 
in these zones where multiple ships can be shooting at you with the AA, because that's going to whittle your planes down quite a bit. So rather than trying to uh, torp that Kabob, you can see we went for the Gneisenau here, or sorry, the uh, Grober Kerr first. Now, he was pretty well angled, but it's such a big, long ship that we actually got him with all three torps there. So I kind of thought, you know, we got the torps, the torpedo bombers. That's a slow, kind of sluggish battleship. Might as well try and get some damage there. Maybe get a flood and get them to cycle's damage count or whatever. But we still want to be flying in the area, getting those destroyers spot. You can see they're still alive, both of them. And if we can do some damage to the grosser curve as well, we're doing the spotting. That's good. Now, unfortunately, look at the team's position on the map here. We got a lot of people playing basically in the spawn. You know, the game started, they dropped the anchor, kicked their feet back. And they're, you know, just content sitting back there. So we're going to kind of have a lot of pressure from the red team. They're going to be pushing forward from different angles. We've got to keep an eye on the flow of the game as the, uh, the carrier player here. Got to keep an eye on the map, see what parts of the map are getting pressed, what needs support, whatever. And check this torp here on the uh, Shimakaze. Just kind of a, well, we missed that salvo, but then we're going around for another pass. And this one, you know, these torps, you just get them in the water sometimes. Yeah, this is not going to be a very accurate shot, and you can see that widespread. Uh, you're going to kind of have to hold the line there with these torpedo bombers. Then that narrows that spread like that. But look at that wild, uh, it's basically like a widespread torp shot in the water. You never know with these torpedoes, though, because they're so doggone slow. I think the Japanese with this fish head are like 53 knots. I want to say the Americans are like 49 or something like that. I mean, they're really, really slow torps. So that guy, he probably dodged it and then overturned and <laughs> hit it. And that it's happened to me playing against the carriers. It's happened to me as the torpedo bombers. Uh, you got these ships that they basically dodge it, but then they overangle and the torps are going so slow that they catch them coming kind of like turning th too much, you know, so you got to be careful. Just get those torps in the water there. Again, we're primarily trying to spot that Shima for our teammates so they shoot them, but if we get them with the torp like we did there, you know, a little bit of luck, obviously, but that's just kind of a bonus. So I'm viewing these carriers. I think their strength mainly lies with the spotting. That's been my philosophy all along. As we get better with the carriers, of course, dealing damage while you're doing the spotting, while you're kind of quarterbacking for the team in terms of game strategy and game flow, uh, you know, the damage will come. But I still focus on doing the spotting uh, roles and seeing what you can do um, from that perspective. I, I can see playing against good carriers, playing with good carrier players, uh, when they're doing the spotting, it can really change the course of the game. Now, I don't think in terms of dealing damage, they can really carry that well. I think some of you guys that are better at carries than me might disagree, but I think right out of the gate, I'm not getting huge damage games with the carriers, although I am trying to mainly focus on spotting, so maybe I'm not going about it in the manner that's conducive to get a lot of damage. But, you know, that's just kind of my philosophy and how I want to approach these things, so... Uh, we got one destroyer dead. The Kaba's in the back there. He's kind of pushing into A. We're going to try and keep an eye on him. But when we're looking at these targets, who do we want to get? you got to kind of look for ships that are localized or, you know, isolated by themselves here. I mean, this guy, Turpitz, he's just kind of sitting there. He's not moving very fast. I thought I'd drop him and then fly over this Fletcher. We're going to ping him, of course, try and get our team to shoot him. They're all kind of huddled way behind that island, though. They're still really not in a good position to... Uh, shoot them. So even though I'm spotting the Fletcher, this is what I was kind of talking about. If if the team can't really do anything with the information that you're trying to provide them, then just try and come up with something else to do. Baltimore pushing in. We got to keep an eye on him. I want to get these radar cruisers off the board here, uh, since we got one destroyer per side. If we can keep our destroyer alive, kill their destroyer, that would be a pretty strong setup. We're actually down a ship at this point in time, but we're up two caps to one. And B, uh, we're probably in a little bit better position to get that. So going to try and chime in here, see if we can open this Fletcher up. Because I think what's preventing my team from pressing this Fletcher and even that Baltimore over there is the presence of this Turpitz. Uh, tight shot there right next to the island, obviously. But I think we're actually going to wind up getting him uh, with at least one of those. Nope, looks like he dodged that one. But again, you can see we attempted to deal the damage to the Turpets and we're trying to spot the Fletcher at the same time. So that's kind of, you know, overall what we're trying to do here. 
because the Fletcher, because the Turpets are grouped up like that, we're getting multiple AAs shooting us down. So we're not going to be long for this world um, <laughs> employing that strategy. And there we were going down. We just got another Torp down to see if we could get lucky like we did with the Shima earlier. But, you know, this is kind of the frustrating part as the carrier. And I think the carrier, if you're going to play carrier in a division with players that are going to shoot the ships that you're trying to spot for him, I think that's pretty strong. Here are the Alaskas getting bullied. He's trying to get out of there uh, before he goes down, but he is killed. And we're still down another ship here. So we're trying to maybe chime in here, get some more damage, um, see what we can do here. <laughs> you know, 30... 30,000 damage in a tier 7 game, you know, it's not huge damage, but we got resets there, we got a few extra thousand damage. Just trying to help our team out here, trying to get that Turpets off the board, because again, we need to move forward, we need to get B, we're kind of in the process of losing our home cap D, which is making me nervous. You never want to lose your home cap if you can uh, prevent it. Fletcher, really low, we're going to try and finish him off or keep him lit, maybe one of our teams will shoot him. Uh, but we got blasted there before we get a good shot off. And it's kind of like, well, come on, guys. All you got to do is sneeze at him. That'll take him off. And boom, nice shot from the Amato. Takes him out there. And that really should seal the deal. As long as our destroyer is uh, not playing completely negligent, uh, they're focusing on the caps, then there's really no way we can lose once we got this sort of setup. So the game should be well in hand at this point in time. We do want to get away from this turpid so because if he can kill that... Uh, Yamato that he's trying to rush with the Torps, then he's going to have a shot at us, and then maybe that'll flip the uh, game around since they still have their carrier and a couple battleships. So we're going to try and rush in there. We get another wild shot with the Torps. I'm trying to maybe get the Torpedo damage on here before the Yamato rams this guy. There's no real reason uh, for him to do that. Not the end of the world, but I mean, they do have a battleship. Could kill the cruiser. You never really know with your friendly random destroyer players. Are they going to play responsibly? Are they going to play for the win? Or are they going to do something goofy and try and uh, suicide rush some battleship for some late match damage? Throwing the game, you never really know. So I, if I'm that Yamato, I'm not necessarily itching to get myself off the board in that situation. I don't think he necessarily had to, but not a horrible play. You never know what those Torps and the uh, Turpets maybe gets up close personal, takes them out. So... Trades the battleship there here. We got another the final battleship on their team and another slow sluggish tier or legendary tier battleship Got in pretty well tight with that spread both of them armed there You can see those torps when they're not armed those little white triangles aren't on there the moment those icons pop up That's when the arming distance has occurred. So we got him, uh, our teammates chimed in there, we got some torps, and we got about 50k damage, which, is that a lot of damage for a carrier? I don't know. Not a bad amount of damage, I guess, but I'm, from my perspective, evaluating this game, I'm kind of looking at it like, okay, we did a pretty good job spotting those destroyers, keeping them lit as well as we could, dealing some damage at the same time, and... We got lucky. Our team was actually shooting those destroyers pretty regularly when we were spotting them. So very frustrating as a carrier player if the team doesn't shoot the destroyers. Then you kind of just have to go into farming damage mode, which usually isn't all that productive. But you can still try and uh, keep an eye on the map. The ability to move around all over the map very rapidly is a strength. So even if you're just kind of forced to deal damage conventionally because the team's not shooting the destroyers, you can still kind of keep an eye on the flow of the game and say, okay, well, this side needs help over there. Maybe I'll go see what I can do to chip in. Anyways, I want to get some tips from you guys, and I also want to get feedback. What do you think about the carriers so far? We've had them in the game now for about a week. Initially, I was getting a little bit nervous just because they were talking a lot about buffs during the uh, or in the patch notes. Now that we've seen them for a week, I don't think they're massively out of control in terms of their power. I got bullied once. I think it was on stream. I was playing the, the new version of the Mogami, whatever that, uh, Suzuya. And we were on the weak side. Just got bullied by the carrier, lit permanently, and then like five or six ships were shooting me at the same time. So that wasn't the most comfortable. But other than that, I don't think the carrier players in general are that great yet. Most of them are just kind of focusing on trying to tour battleships or even they'll sail all the way or fly to the back of the map and try and attack the enemy carrier right out the get-go, which neither of those are very productive. 
you can kind of spot what I would consider to be good carrier players. They'll just keep those destroyers focused until the team wipes them out. Then, you know, they can take control of the game from there. So, overall, I think the carriers are in a pretty good spot. We'll see. They did uh, mention the other day that they're going to put the German carriers in over the summer. I think those have like the AP bombers and the rockets on the PC version. Those are the type of things that make me a little bit nervous because those are supposedly really strong on the PC. Um, but I think overall they've been doing a pretty good job balancing our version of the carriers so far, at least in my opinion. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. But again, I do want to get your uh, feedback. So maybe in addition to your entry, if you want to just give me some feedback on the carriers i'll check it out and potentially pass along to wargaming so that's going to be it for that one guys hope you did enjoy it if you did please hit the thumbs up if you're new to the channel consider subscribing i got lots of world of warships coming all the time questions comments leave below love to hear from you and we'll see y'all later peace